listen to the prayer tonight over our nation, over our cities. Come awaken your people. Come awaken the city. Oh God, every mile, pour it out, pour it out. Every stronghold will crumble. Hear the chains hit the ground. Oh God, every Bible, pour it out.
Good evening, everybody, and it's uh, fantastic to be with you again this evening, Monday evening, uh, 8 p.m., and um, this is becoming our normal spot to come out live. Uh, Sam and I tonight from Johannesburg, um, but it's so good to be out with you tonight on the YouTube live stream. You probably know my name's Dorian Wrigley. I love Jesus. I have a passion to see his kingdom established in every facet and area of society, including the marketplace. And tonight I have a very special co-host, my good friend, Sam Makarossi. Um, hey, you all know Sam from being on the back end of the chat for the last few weeks. Tonight we said, Sam, time to get onto the front end of the camera. Sam, great to have you with us, friend. Thanks, thanks, bro. Good to be here. It's been uh, fun in the back end. Uh, so it's time for something new today. Sam, I was trying to remember how long, how long we've known each other for, but I know it's a long time, but I couldn't quite put my finger on exactly when it was, because I've been in Joburg since about 1991, but can you remember? Bro, so I, I moved up to Joburg 10 years after you, so that was 2001. Uh, that's when I joined uh, his people, Joburg, back in those days, and that's, that's when we met, 20, almost 20 years ago. Well, friend, it's, uh, I trust it's going to be a lot more, a lot longer as we just kind of keep doing what God's been doing in our hearts, yeah. in our lives, in our church, in the marketplace together. But Sam, um, many people will know you, many will not. Why don't you take a moment and just tell, tell us a bit about you, who, sure. you know, the man behind Sam Mokorosi. <laughs> sure. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Dorian. Uh, really great to be here. Hello, everybody uh, out on the YouTube world. Um, my name is Sam Mokorossi. Uh, professionally, I am the CEO of Unani Corporate Finance. So we help our clients buy and sell companies, uh, raise capital, um, do transactions. Um, Church-wise, I'm a worship pastor out at uh, Every Nation Ramsip. Uh, been there for almost four years now, which has been a fantastic journey under the leadership of uh, Pastor Carol and Pastor Andrew. And um, family-wise, Jolly and I were actually celebrating 23 years as a couple um, just the other day. Uh, married for 17 years and uh, five kids and um, just uh, learning how to be a primary school teacher as well during lockdown and uh, doing homeschooling. And Sam, I, I know that... Um... I know that one thing that many people may not know about you, those that are close to you would, but I remember you and Jolly were newly married and God laid on your heart to adopt four relatively grown children. Uh, yeah. Tell us a bit about what happened there. Yeah. So, um, you know, it was, it was an interesting story. We just, we just fell in love um, after, you know, some, uh, some, you know, uh, bringing, bringing the kids to join us for over Christmas. And we said, guys, Christmas was great. Come for weekends, come for holidays. Why don't you just come forever? And uh, we were in our 20s. They were in their teens. Um, and it's been, uh, it's been an amazing journey since then. We now have uh, three grandkids. Can you believe it? Wow. <laughs> um, you know, guys are out of varsity, working at APSA and in marketing and, and branding and all of that. So it's, it's fantastic. You know, Sam, most of us dream of becoming great grandparents one day, but I think you, have, you and Jolly could be great, great grandparents one day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You guys have been an inspiring, you know, lesson to all of us and uh, just led the way in so many aspects. And um, really, that's kind of part of what we're wanting to focus on tonight is because mm. tonight we've got four fantastic testimonies. You know, we've yep. been talking over the last four weeks about how God is raising up the church and raising up marketplaces in the church. 
uh, marketplace leaders in the church. Yeah. And um, we've been talking about how we need to be trusting God for his provision. Yeah. And, uh, and so tonight we're going to have four testimonies of people that have seen just that happen in, in lockdown. And I, I've been touched by it. I know you probably have been too, Sam. Yeah, no, it's, it's really interesting. You know, we, as we've been talking through this uh, series, you know, we've been talking about what should the government be doing? What should organizations be doing? And we'll touch on a little bit of that. But also I'm excited about what can individuals be doing in their personal finances and really taking control of their own uh, uh, destiny financially. And so that's, that's exciting today. So before we get into our, our uh, testimonies this evening, just again, a big thank you to those of you that are working in the background. Uh, Dave Porter moderating this evening. Dave, you're a rock star. Thank you, my friend. Uh, and, um, and Charles Hellyer, who is kind of out there pushing buttons in the background to make sure that everything goes out live and going out smoothly. So guys, thank you. And, uh, and we really do appreciate you. So first, time, first up this evening, we've got... Um, somebody who is very, very special, uh, a young lady called Rebecca Lund. Um, Rebecca and her family have been part of the Every Nation Rosebank congregation for a number of years. You know, I guess, uh, I'm not quite sure if it's as long as you and I have known each other, Sam, but certainly it's, it's probably at least as long. And uh, Chris and Catherine Lund, um, and Rebecca is their daughter, and so, Rebecca, if you're around, uh, maybe you can pop your video on and uh, we can get a good look at you. And um, Rebecca, thank you. Thank you for joining us. It's such a pleasure thank to have you. you with us on the Marketplace Forum. Thank you for having me. So now, Rebecca, um, how old are you? I mean, you, I mean, I remember you when you were a lot younger and uh, <laughs> you're probably still young enough not to be concerned about us knowing your age, but what, what are you? <laughs> You're 22. Yes. And Rebecca, I know that um, just recently you've finished chef school. I think you were down in Cape Town for the last three years, studying to be a chef. You got back up to Joburg at the beginning of this year. Tell me, how easy was it to find a job? Well, because of the school I went to, it was fortunately easy. There's a lot of chefs here, but they don't have a lot of training. So through like a family friend, I got a job at the local grill. And I've been working there since December. Yeah, so it's been it's been really great. Yeah, we know the local grill is just around, down the down the yes, road from uh, Every Nation Church. Church. We love Steve, who is the owner there. Uh, he makes great food, but uh, I'm sure that even the local grill, just like most other restaurants, ended up being shut down. And I guess you were at home without a job. And yeah. what did you then do as you were kind of sitting at home contemplating what to do with the, you know, over the lockdown period? Well, it was, you know, quite tough because it's hard to, I knew I wanted to start a business. You know, I've seen my mom do various businesses over the years. So that's just my destiny. So I, I started a food delivery business. So it's, um, it's something that I wanted to do that was obviously a lot of people are doing meal delivery services, but yeah. just to give it a unique edge, obviously, because I'm a qualified chef, I can yeah. do techniques and work with food that some might not be comfortable with. So I've created a menu. So Monday to Friday, you get a different meal every single day. That way, if you want to order more than once a week, you get a nice balanced meal. Also, everything is as wholesome and healthy as possible. And also, I'm trying to be a little bit more eco-friendly. There's a lot of disposable containers going around. So I'm doing mine in Tupperwares to be washed and reused. So that's something that's important to me. Right. So that's right. what I've been doing. And, and, and I just want to say that um, when we got your email last week, we immediately said we got to give this a go. <laughs> and we had your meal this evening. I think um, we were probably, the Wrigley's were probably one of your very, very first customers. Yes, and I want to say it was today. incredible. It was just amazing. Um, I, and, uh, it was a, I think Mondays is, is it vegetable nights or, you know, I think it you got a different Monday. menu. Yeah. Is that right? Yes. So different menu for every night of the week. And I want to just tell you, it was amazing. I, I'm, uh, I'm glad we uh, ordered a bit extra because I had two hoppings. So it was really, really, That's really good. good. To hear. <laughs> so now, so tell me, um, so, I mean, Rebecca, I mean, 
most people kind of get into a lockdown scenario and they kind of think, oh my gosh, um, what am I going to do? Um, it's just so impressive that a, a young 22 year old mm -hmm. said, okay, I've always had this dream, this desire to kind of start a business, but I want it to be unique. I want it to be different. And I think it's a real example that, um, you know, that uh, you've been able to set for so many people to say in the midst, in the kind of light of a big crisis, I'm going to do something different. But now tell me, you, you already mentioned some differences that you're doing, like you're trying to be eco-friendly, using reusable containers. You're obviously a chef, so that kind of adds to the taste and how you put it together. But, but what other things have you, were you thinking of doing or have you done as part of your business that you're putting out there? Okay, well, to start off with, I'm keeping it really simple. So I'm trying to focus it on it being a bit more affordable and I'm targeting basically busy moms. So the fact that they have a variety every day, I think is I've already heard feedback that that's something that makes it really easy for them. They don't really think about it. And then I'm also keeping it very family orientated. So I've got my two brothers and sister, they're helping me already. So I'm employing them, I'm creating employment for them. So they are quite happy that, about That's fantastic. So, so not only have you got yourself going economically, but you've also got, uh, you created some employment for other parts, other members of the family as well. Yeah. In fact, uh, I think you're, in fact, your dad a little bit this evening. So, um, you know, I hope he's not charging you too much for the delivery service. <laughs> no, <laughs> not yet. But Rebecca, one other thing, you know, as we're wrapping up here, I, and the reason I asked your age is because I was just so impressed by A, your initiative, B, your desire to kind of get out there and take a risk and get something done. But I was so impressed when you, when you and I were talking last week, you were talking about the deeper purpose behind why you're doing this. Why don't you just share a little bit of, about that with us this evening? Okay, well, um, so my family and I are very big on social justice. It's something I've been brought up on. So I don't think there's any reason to start a business without any intention of giving back, because I feel that's a kingdom value that we should always give back no matter what we do, I've got, I've been given certain gifts and I need to use that to give back. So I have every intention once it gets going down the line to, to give back, hopefully employ more people, hopefully donate food. Who knows what will happen, but I, I, I know that this business will be used to help other people. Well, Rebecca, I, I, I'm very impressed. And I'm sure a lot of people watching you this evening are very impressed. Um, People out there that are kind of finding themselves in a place, maybe maybe not earning as much, maybe having been earning for a while, what advice would you give to people out there that are saying, God, help? Well, I would say firstly, this lockdown, I think it's really going to shift the way the economy is working. So I think we just need to be adaptable to what happens. So just find a gap in the market and just, go for it. I mean, I didn't necessarily think this is what I would start doing, but I identified there was a need for it. So I went with it. And mm. I mean, definitely God planted a seed in me to do that. So just also, I think it's very important just to try. So there's, well, you know, there's a lot of opportunity and just go out there and try. And I promise you that like, it'll work. If people see you are trying, it's better than just sitting, doing nothing. And and thank you. And I think you've demonstrated that to us. Now, Rebecca, you didn't ask me to do this, but if I can highly recommend your food. How do people find you? Where, you know, where do they search for? Your name, your business is what called Bex the Chef, I think. Yes. B-E-X the Chef. Yeah. How do people find you? So currently I have an Instagram account under that name. And then I've got an email, it's just bexthechef at gmail.com. Um, probably we'll do a Facebook page soon, but if there's any interest, you can just email me and I will send you the, the menu and relevant information. Well, Rebecca, we wish you all the best. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. And we just pray that it will be, not only be a catalyst for you and your family, but it will be a catalyst for many as they just embrace what you've done and how you've done it. So thank you. Thank you. God bless. Sam. Me too. Sam, that's that's so impressive, friend. I am I'm yeah. just blown away by the simplicity the, yes. of the faith, 
and just the, you know the get up and go just kind of get out there and do it yeah yeah and i think you know it's about innovation in this new normal and um and i think you know one of the things i've been hearing is that the new normal has to be better than the old normal and i and i like the social justice the sustainability um all of that is fantastic so well, well done bex the chef so sam i think um Nao is up next and i know we were going to try and see if we could get on with data but that might have been a struggle but um Nao, are you on the line by phone hi yes sorry i'm on the line i'm on the line by phone thank you okay hey Nao, welcome uh really good to have you here um so family we, we're going to be chatting to to Nao today on a more kind of personal finance basis. Um, so Neo, welcome and really great to have you. Hi, Sam, thanks, great to be here. Yeah. So Neo, just um, here to hear your story and I think it starts in 2016, right? When uh, after some bad advice, you uh, bought yourself a property and um, things got a bit difficult, the budget got tight uh, debt started piling up. Can you uh, can you tell us a little bit about that story? Yes. So in twenty, right about twenty fifteen, yes, I bought property in a complex, and um, the agent who was selling me the property only told me about the bond amount that I would mm. need to pay. So from that amount, I thought that I would be able to afford living there. Only afterwards did I become aware of extra costs like rates, utilities, and maintenance. Mm. So I found myself needing to spend a bulk of my salary on the bond and property expenses. So as a result, like things like petrol and food were paid for using credit cards and overdraft facilities. Before too long, I found myself 250000 in debt. Um, sure. So yeah, sure. that's, that's kind of like <laughs> yeah, how, how everything escalated to that. Yeah, so so your first property, two thousand and fifty thousand, two hundred and fifty thousand in debt on the credit card. What what did you do at that stage? So at that stage, um, so kind of like how we were living was, you know, um, like I said, food we were buying on credit card, and then um, petrol I was also buying on credit card and over like increasing my overdraft. So literally, that was like my life month after month, you know. Mm. And then, um, like one day, like at work, you know, I clearly heard God say to me that I should let go of the property because obviously the home debt situation was really, you know, giving me a lot of stress. I mm. then called the bank and told them that I can no longer afford the property and would like to sell. And um, at right about the same time when I was going through that process, my brother was also going through the same thing. And mm -hmm. he referred me to debt counselors. Then I began the four-year journey that would see me debt-free in September 2020. Sure. So, so four years of um, debt process. What, what is that like? It must, must have been quite challenging. <laughs> it, it is very challenging because what they do is they kind of like map out. So firstly, they, 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 you have to submit, you know, literally everything that you owe in. And then they kind of like um, map out how long the process is going to be. And there's a rehabilitation payment that one needs to pay. And um, so when they mapped out everything on the graph, they said to me that I would be debt free in September 2020. Okay. Okay. And, um, and, and uh, what's exciting is that lockdown has actually given you an opportunity to get debt-free even yes. quicker. Can you, can you tell us yes. the redemption story of God and, and where you are now? Yes. Yeah. So, um, so pre-lockdown, I mean, obviously I had expenses, you know, my biggest one being, you know, petrol. So in the, when, when the lockdown started, I mean, you know, I, I had all of a sudden like extra amounts of money that I was not using, for example, towards petrol and other things like, you know, um, going to the hair salon and stuff that I didn't do. And I said to myself, yeah. listen, why don't I just take that money and just, you know, reallocate it towards paying debt, you know? So that's what I've been doing. And yeah, I mean, 
um, like earlier than, I mean, I was actually quite surprised as well because like literally end of this month, I will be, I will be debt free. That, that's fantastic. So you've brought your debt repayment um, from September to May. And um, yes. that's, just, that's just your hard work and, and God helping you um, through, through the debt process. Now, quickly, yeah. before we go, when you and I spoke, you spoke about tithing um, this afternoon. Can you just share with the team about, about that, which was just found inspirational? Yes. So, I mean, uh, prior to me getting the property, you know, so the last time that I actually paid a tithe was before I got the property. And um, obviously when I was in debt, I couldn't tithe because everything was going going towards, you know, the, the property expenses. So when the, the, the debt counseling guys, sorry, oh. so when the debt counseling, so can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. I'm oh, sorry about that. So when the when the debt counseling guys, you know, uh, uh, calculated my rehabilitation amount, I clearly heard the Holy Spirit saying to me, "Now you can tithe." So not only was I committing to a debt counseling process, but I needed to, you know, trust God and be faithful as well with paying my tithes. So I do wanted to say that there was a spiritual element to me getting to where I am at the moment as well. Fantastic. Fantastic. That's, that's so amazing. Um, now, any advice for anyone who might be going through something similar to what you, you're going through and, and, and where you've been over the last four years? Okay, yes, definitely. So what I've learned is that, you know, you should do your homework. Ask <laughs> around. and yeah, yeah, do your homework. Ask around. And if something sounds too good to be true, you know, it probably is. For me personally, yeah. I saw what coming through for me as an ever-present help in time of need. I mean, I didn't consult God or anyone when I was buying the property, and yet God stepped in and helped me. You know, he gave me wisdom and the commitment to follow through with the process so that I live debt free. So definitely do your homework and ask around, you know. Just don't go into, you know, into the, into the deep end like I did because that had, like, you know, devastating results for me. That's, that's, that's fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, that's been really inspirational and, and just encouraging to see how God has helped you turn around your yeah. life in, in, in this kind of um, crazy lockdown times that we... Yeah. 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 Yes. Thanks. Well, Mayo, thank, thank you, you so much. Um, yeah. really, Thanks. Really appreciate you coming on to share this stuff with us. And Sam, as I was just reflecting on what Mayo was saying there, um, it just struck me, you know, um, absolutely, such good advice to do your homework properly. But yeah. sometimes, regardless of how we do our homework, uh, sometimes it's, uh, we find ourselves in a tricky situation. And it takes real courage, real courage to then do the right thing. Yeah. And um, so I just, I just want to, I just want to, she's a hero. She's one of my heroes because uh, to then do the right thing and commit to a four-year process. Yeah. And, then, yeah, and then to be, and then to cut this thing short by five months, that's not easy to do. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. it's almost in a sense, re-looking at her budget, thank God, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, it's, 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 uh, it's really inspirational. Thank you, Neo. Thank you for sharing your time with us. Um, and, and um, bro, be before we, we move off from Neo, you know, I was actually reading this in my quiet time this morning, um, Proverbs 3, 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lead not on your own understanding, acknowledge him in all your ways. Yeah. And then in verse 9, it says, honor the Lord from your wealth and from the first fruit of your produce. And it's just been amazing how the turnaround for Neo came in her um, yeah. leaning on him, trusting yeah. in his understanding, and then honoring him with her first fruit. I think it's fantastic. And Sam, we, we should never underestimate that, you know, the um, making sure we don't eat our seed. You know, it's yeah. so tempting. It's so tempting when, when things get tight to, to all of a sudden, that part that we were using to give, that part that mm -hmm. we were using to tie, that part that we're using to bless others, so tempting to say, okay, but I've just seen it so often in my life. I, I've seen it when I was when I've been earning significant amounts of money and the bonuses were just phenomenal. And I've seen it at times when we were tight and 
I wasn't taking a salary because the rest of the team needed to get paid first. And I just realized that God's love for me was the same, whether we were prospering or whether we were, we were, whether we were challenged. Mm. But at the times God's saying, don't eat your seed. And yeah. I just, yeah. you know, it's just so amazing to see how God comes through for us. Great. Well, um, Andrew Kirschman, uh, it's so good to have you with us this evening. Um, Andrew is somebody that I haven't known for that long, but in the in the last few weeks, it feels like I've just gotten to know him so well, and it's in such a depth. Uh, Andrew and I both have sons that go to uh, St. John's and uh, daughters that go to Rodine, uh, and um, and so um, and that's where we met. We met at St. John's prayer meeting. And uh, Andrew, it's so good to have you with us this evening. Uh, hi, Dorian. Uh, Dorian, thanks. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a pleasure. It's nice to be here. Thanks so much for asking me to join you on this. Now, Andrew, you operate in the property space. Please just tell us a bit more about the business. Tell us a bit more about you. Tell us a bit more about your family. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll, I think I'll discuss my family first. Uh, yeah. Been married to Candice, my wife, uh, for about 18 years now. Um, we've got four kids, uh, two boys, two girls, um, ranging between four and sort of 16 years of age. Um, two boys at St. John's, uh, Rachel's at Rodine, and then I've got Hannah, who's four, and she's she's going to go to Rodine next year. So, yeah, I've got uh, a, a big bunch. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, just in terms of work, uh, I'm a commercial uh, property owner, so effectively a landlord. Um, you know, we, I've got a small portfolio of retail and industrial properties um, that we rent out. Uh, I work from home. So this whole sort of lockdown period, it's actually hasn't really been too much, too, too different for me. Um, and uh, yeah, just uh, um, besides all the chores that we've had. So, yeah. yeah no, uh, <laughs> I think all of us as, as husbands, as fathers, as Business businessmen that are working from home have found that there's been a little extra in the chores that you needed to do, but that's all part of the family family experience, isn't it? Um, now, Andrew, the the property market seems to be one that has been significantly, um, you know, influenced as a result of COVID nineteen. But I suspect that it's been difficult for a while. What's it been like in the property market uh, over the last few years? Um, last few years, you know, Dorian, it's, it's been very tough. Um, I, th I think not just for us, for, for everybody in this country, you know, we've, we've been sort of trying to navigate our, our way through um, the last five years and uh, find our way around um, uh, sort of a low, poor economic growth, uh, years of drought, um, the, the energy crisis, load shedding, um, and, uh, you know, state capture. So uh, it's, it's just been very difficult. Um, you know, in, in terms of our, our properties, our, our rents seem to have been going sideways, uh, going uh, going backwards in a lot of situations. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of rental reversions, and uh, yeah, we're just battling to find good quality tenants. Uh, um, you know, there's just not an abundance of them, so there's a there's a low supply. So it's it's just been incredibly tough, and uh, yeah, I think it's just been tough for everyone. So it, it sounds like this was a fairly tough space to be uh, before COVID nineteen lockdowns. And I suspect it's gotten even worse since then. I mean, but tell us what it's been like for someone that's been on the inside of that process. You know, uh, you know recently very challenging. You know, I think this just came completely out of left field. Um, you know, all of uh, a lot of businesses having to shut down. And uh, you know, I think uh, beginning of uh, end of uh, end of February, beginning of March, we started fielding calls, um, uh, emails. Tenants started calling in. Uh, you know, what are we as landlords going to do for them? Uh, in terms of rental holidays, uh, um, rebates, um, assistance, and uh, you know, I just sort of you know, each had, had to take each case mm -hmm. on its own, um, and uh, on, a, on a sort of a day by day basis. So you know, also explaining to our tenants that you know we've got costs to pay. We we've got insurance premiums, uh, rates, taxes, water, sewer, electrical, um, overheads, uh, and you know this is this is also my my personal income. So we sort of had to explain that element to them. Um, I think sometimes they think the landlord's just made of cash and, uh, and it's, got, it's got no concerns, so, but we've got plenty of concerns. And, uh, you know, um, just, uh, it's just been very interesting, you know, the, especially, especially for the retail tenants, you know, like our restaurants and that, you know, the guys, by, by law, they've had to close down their shops. Uh, they, we don't know when they're going to be able to open. There's no sort of end in sight. 
And um, yeah, it's, it's just been very concerning. We've, we've haven't received a lot of that rental income and we're just taking it one day at a time. And then, you know, on our industrial tenants, uh, um, thank goodness, uh, we've just, uh, we just got the right tenants there. You know, we've, uh, the guys that we did get, they've, they've been able to supply stuff to the central services market. Um, our one guy is, uh, he, he supplies bleach products and, uh, um, and cleaning products and that. And he, he went from two shifts during the day to, to four shifts, two, day, two in the day and two in the night. So he's been extremely busy. Other guys supplying uh, valves to the, um, the agricultural market and the, um, and the mining sector. So he, they've all been able to make income and uh, um, oh, just it's, it's, you know, they've, they've paid their rent. And in actual fact, we've, we've received more rent than we anticipated at the beginning of this thing. So I'm just, uh, I'm just feeling so blessed at the moment. Uh, I really thought I was going to be struggling. Now, now Andrew, um, we didn't talk about this before, but I, I know that um, your approach to the tenants have been not what one would typically expect from a landlord. Uh, in the sense of, I've heard you say things like, I want to sit down with my tenants and help figure out what they can do, rather than kind of getting the call and pound the table. Do you think that approach, almost that contrarian approach of trying to understand, trying to be accommodating, do you think that's actually resulted in you getting greater favor from your tenants and receiving more income? Um, definitely, I think uh, you know because I'm a I'm a small landlord. You know, I'm not uh, I'm not a big fund in that way. A lot of the a lot of these landlords they go out they uh, they employ property managers who don't have a, any sort of real rapport with their tenants. You know, I'm I'm continuously phoning my tenants. Uh, in fact, uh, this week I, I was very surprised to see that my one industrial tenant paid 100% of his rent. So um, I picked up the phone. I, um, I phoned him and I actually thanked him for paying his rent. I think he was he was quite shocked that I was thanking him for paying something that he was supposed to pay. And I just said, it's, it's just so refreshing. And he said that, you know, if he cuts off payment, then, then uh, um, you know, somebody else down the line cuts off payment and it, it just becomes a sort of an ongoing domino effect. So, um, yeah, I think that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm fair to my tenants. Um, they, they, they know where they stand. They know, but they, but they also know that I, I can get tough if I have to. So, um, <laughs> yeah, you just you know, work through it. Now, Andrew, um, you and I have been talking a while, as well over the last few weeks, um, and you've been sharing quite openly about the journey that you've been on with and how often it's resulted in anxiety and frustration and uh, trying to figure out your walk with God, with your business, and how this all comes together. And would you mind taking us a bit down that path and just sharing a bit of your experiences with us? Sure. Um... Yeah, I, I, I think I, I've, uh, for the last sort of 10 years, I've, I've, uh, in terms of my anxiety, I've, uh, I've been quite an anxious sort of person. And, uh, and, and recently, I've, you know, I think I was, always, I was always trying to do everything on my own. And, uh, and even though I've been a Christian for uh, sort of since 2011, uh, still, um, and, and knowing what I was supposed to be doing, I still try to do everything on my own and my own shoulders and that. And, and my, one of my things that I've realized is I've actually... God is really there to help us, and uh, and, I've, and I've started to rely a lot more on Him. And uh, you know, with with issues and anxiety and that, and whenever I uh, I, I, I do get anxious, you know, if, if problems come up, I, um, I I can just now hand it over and, and just believe that God is God is good and that He's uh, He's um, He's wanting the best for me. And uh, now I just think back now um, the last two years, we've I've just been so frustrated. I've been I've been sort of looking for properties uh, and, and I just haven't really been able to find anything. I haven't been able to do anything. And, uh, um, you know, uh, very, very fortunately, a couple of years ago, we were able to, to pay off our property portfolio. So we, we don't have any debt um, and uh, it's ungeared, which is just quite a nice position to be in. And we took that, that balance sheet and we decided about two years ago to actively go out and find some commercial properties to purchase. And then that's what I did. I started analyzing deals. Uh, I'm very analytical. Um, I, I, I looked at the retail space, industrial, commercial, uh, self-storage, uh, um, conversions of uh, commercial offices to residential hotels. And um, I just the numbers just didn't work. There's just no value in the markets. And I, um, I was just getting incredibly frustrated. I felt like I wasn't moving forward that uh, I was just standing still. I looked around my, my friends were, they were doing well. Um, my, my 
colleagues were uh, they were building big portfolios they were doing acquisitions um so i think there was a there was a lot of envy there which is terrible but uh, um and uh, yeah i just uh, I, I got stuck in that trap and um and just frustrated and uh, but you know i prayed into this with, with candace and um and you know and just handed it over and andrew i um I thank you I, I think it's just so refreshing just to be vulnerable uh, because, you know, sometimes we can pretend that everything's fine, but we, we, we experience the same, you know, anxieties, we experience the same kind of like temptations, we kind of look around and say, well, why is that happening for them and not happening for us? And I really appreciate the way you just vulnerable with us. But I know, because you've shared this with me, that there was a breakthrough that was on its way coming. Can you tell us a bit more about how that's been developing? Yeah, um, Dorian, you know, I think it's uh, it's more it's more of a realization that uh, you know that God is that He does have a plan for us and He does have a future for us. And you know, I couldn't I couldn't see it at the time, but but when I discussed this with you about uh, one or two weeks ago, I, I, I suddenly thought, you know, if I'd actually been able to secure these properties, do deals, I would have had to incur a lot of debt. And uh, um, and you know, with uh, with the current sort of economic uh, climate at the moment, tenants not paying and that, I, th I think I would have got myself into a lot of financial trouble because, you know, suddenly you don't, have, uh, you don't have income to service your bond, you're having to go and uh, speak to the bank nicely. Um, and, uh, yeah, I might have lost my buildings, I might have, I might have gone bankrupt. So, um, yeah, just, uh, just uh, it's fantastic. I just realized that, you know, God knows best and uh, that um, his, his timing is perfect. So, um, yeah, I'm just, uh, that's, that's my realization that I, you know, I, couldn't, I couldn't see it at the time. Um, I just felt frustrated, and uh, and I just feel so blessed that uh, that whatever projects I looked at, um, uh, I, I was just able to make the decision not to purchase. And and I'm actually in a position now that I've got an ungeared portfolio. I've got uh, I've got equity in my portfolio, and that if uh, if, do, if good deals do come up, I, I'm I'm going to be in a position now to to purchase those. And um, and and Andrew, what what I love about what you were just saying there. Is that, um, is that sometimes we feel and we think God's not answering. God's not there. And I'm sure you were desperately seeking God for, why can't I find another property to add to this portfolio? But sometimes God is speaking. He's just saying no. And at the time, we just don't realize why he's saying no. And there's no doubt in my mind that he was protecting you and preparing you for a time. Um, Give me good. <laughs> So I'm sure this has given you greater insight into who God is and his relationship with you. Can you tell us? Yeah, I just, uh, um, I just realized in, in this life, uh, you know, we, we, we think we're so smart. And I've just realized that, you know, everything, there's so much that's out of our control. And, uh, you know, we just really sometimes just need to trust God fully. Um, we need to pray into every single situation and just know that God is good and, and that he, he really wants the, the best for all of us in, in this world. And, you know, we just really have to believe that. Um, let's, uh, let's try and take our, our, our ability out of it and, and, and just trust into God. And I've just seen, I've seen absolute miracles in the, well, since I've had a relationship with God, I think he's wonderful. And Andrew, you know what, uh, so often that's something we read in the word of God. We, we want to believe it. Theoretically, we, 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 we're simulated but it's so much more powerful when somebody comes along and says, here's my testimony, yes. this is what happened. But I guess the, the challenge, um, Andrew, is um, there might be some people even watching right now that are kind of possibly in a situation where they are yet and they are struggling and, um, and, and they, they, they may not have had the, the benefit that you've had, um, you know, and, and are in a well-structured. What would you say to people like that right now? Possibly in the same industry, maybe not, but kind of here and needing to trust God. No, oh, it's just uh, back into that. Uh, you know, it's it's a very difficult situation. I say to a lot of my friends, you know, the the whole world is in this situation together. So it's it's, it's a it's a very unique situation. Um, I think you've just got to take it a day at a time. You you, you can't get anxious about what's going to happen in a month's time or two months time or three months time. You know, you can go and talk to the banks. Everyone's going to be working with you in the situation. You know, there's just too many people that are uh, potentially at risk here for, 
for the the banks to to um, pick on you in uh, uh, on on your own. So um, yeah, just uh, really just trust God fully, and um, that He'll carry you through these unique times. And uh, yeah, I just think prayer is amazing. I is lately I've you know when I when I get to that uh, that junction in the road where I can't see the way forward and. I'm just, I don't, I don't even let the negativity and the anxiety get in my way. I just think, uh, I just pray to God and I just know that he's going to sort it out and give me the insight and the wisdom to to deal with it. And you know, two days later, it pops into my head and uh, <laughs> it's just an incredible experience. So God, God will get you through this. Andrew, my friend, thank you so much for coming through to be with us this evening. Um, I look forward to staying close and look forward to seeing how God takes you and your family from glory to glory. Uh, in this space as well. So thank you for being with us tonight, Andrew. Cheers, thanks. Great. Sam, I am, I, I'm just so blessed, my brother, when I'm just hearing these because it's, uh, as I was saying, it's, it, it's one thing theoretically, you know, saying, don't fear. You know, yeah. we all know God has not given us a spirit of fear. Yeah. But love, of power, of a sound mind. But it's another thing altogether when we go through a situation where it is so easy to fear and we choose, yeah. Lord, yeah. I'm going to trust you. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, it's, and it's such a great testimony um, just about, you know, taking those anxieties to God and, and really asking for wisdom. Um, in our Connect group, we've been spending quite a lot of time in Philippians 4, um, you know, when it says, uh, don't be anxious for anything, but prayer, petition, thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and that peace that passes understanding um, protects your heart and your mind. And I think Andrew's story is just such a great testimony of that verse coming true in his life. And the wisdom of God to not be buying, uh, you know, in the last few years, because, um, you know, it's, it's much better to be ungeared and, and, and unlevered at this time, you know. And, and, you know, Sam, just practically, you know, sometimes you, if you heard this, I mean, I, I, God gave me, I, I was preaching on Sunday and God gave me a message on how he uses, um, how he uses suffering and mm. tribulation to build our faith and our hope. Mm. Um, and sometimes we're going through a process because he's doing a deeper work in our lives. Mm. Um, but sometimes God's saying no for, because we need to, we need to deal with certain things. Yeah. And, um, and I just, I just want to urge, I, I, there might be guys watching and they're going, man, I wish, I wish I'd been more obedient. Or I wish I had listened then, or I, I wish I hadn't forced something through. The beauty is there are multiple do-overs in the kingdom of God, just like Nao's testimony, you know, yeah. in a crisis, 250,000 rand in debt. Now, believe me, for Nao, we know it. We love her. She's an administrator at Every Nation Rose Bank. She's awesome, but she earns a salary that's, I mean, based on what an administrator earns, that is a huge debt. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and I just want to encourage you. You might be sitting there looking at the bank debt on your properties or whatever else, and you're saying, God, I don't know. I don't know how we're going to get through this. Yeah. It's the same principles. Yeah. Lord, help me. Give us the creativity. We're going to submit this to you. God, we're going to bring this to you. Lord, show us the way. Bro, before we move on to Marius, I was just thinking, you know, one great teacher in this financial space is Dave Ramsey. Um, he's got a great book called Total Money Makeover. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, that's a path that my wife and I um, started going on over the last sort of two years or so. And it's, it's really just great advice um really rock solid stuff he's a christian um out in the marketplace in fact he was in property like andrew um got himself in a lot of trouble went bankrupt and had to figure out how to um how to do a proper financial plan and, and um he's he's, he's, really, he's a great teacher so that's dave ramsey in the name of his book sam total money makeover Total money makeover. We'll, we'll put that in the in the comments section or in the description after this when the video is posted as well. But thank you. That's that's awesome. So our friend Marius. Um, welcome, Marius. It's great to have you on the, the Marketplace Forum with us this evening. Good evening, Dorian. Good evening, Sam. Uh, thanks for having me. Good to see you, Marius. 
So, Marius, um, like uh, like Dorian, you and and myself, you you're quite involved in business, um, but also uh, heavily involved in church. Can you tell us a little bit about your story, um, your position at Stangen as uh, the CEO there, and and um, and just also a little bit about life balance, being a CEO, uh, committed Christian, family. Um, tell us a little bit about that. Thanks, Sam. Um, yeah, so I'm married to Morena. Uh, we are pastors at Every Nation Randberg. Um, and at the same time, as you've said, I'm CEO of a life insurance company. Um, I think my journey started first year at university where I got saved um, and started going to um, the His People Stellenbosch, uh, today Every Nation Stellenbosch. Yeah. And I was just fortunate from a young age to be surrounded by a generation of leaders who understood discipleship um, and who took me on board, taught me about um, lordship as a fundamental principle um, and just encouraged me to live out my faith um, in the marketplace. And it made such a big difference and impact on my life. And it gave me a passion to really apply biblical principles um, in the workplace and re- it mm. just shifted my mindset from what I was taught. Um, I'm a qualified actuary by trade. Um, just some of the economic principles that I taught yeah. um, or learned at varsity, uh, but actually finding within scripture so many principles for the economy, for the workplace, for business. Mm. And over the years, as I applied them and really tested God in them, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm they are just of so much more value than what I was taught um, at Varsity. And so I think today, you know, balancing um, marketplace ministry, uh, church ministry, at the end of the day, both of those roles require shepherding people, um, discipling and paying it forward, uh, you know, just teaching about biblical principles. Um, And that's what I get excited about um, in the workplace um, you know, Jesus was all about restoring people. Um, and I just see my role in terms of managing staff as helping to restore them. Who are they? Their identity, what God has called them to. Um, in terms of customers, even in a current COVID-19 context, yeah. customers are struggling to pay premiums. You know, how can we help? How can we help restore yeah. them in a situation yeah. so that families can remain uh, protected? Um, yeah, and the rest of it, I think, is a big part Um it's just, you know, being an intercessor in the workplace, mm-hmm. the primary um, focus for me as a CEO, trusting yeah. God for supernatural wisdom and impartation yeah. and solving complex problems. And yeah, just having that balance between faith um, in the spiritual realm and just diligence and prudence in the natural. Um, yeah. Maybe just to summarize that point, um, I think it's been ministry life that has really shaped me for the workplace, if yeah. that makes sense. because the yeah. standard of honoring people, being obedient to God's call yeah. upon lives, um, it's, it's challenging um, in a church environment, uh, but it's even more challenging in the workplace. Um, and it was really just that discipleship formation. And I want to honor, you know, the generation of leaders like Darian and yourselves who have invested in us as youngsters. Um, yeah and have just groomed us uh, for, for the marketplace. No, that's, that's fantastic. I, I echo that. I mean, some of those lessons you learn leading a, a worship team, all of a sudden when you're leading a team at the office, um, you know, it's the, the interpersonal skills, the leadership skills, vision, um, you know, helping guys with discipline. It, it all starts to, uh, to roll out in, in the workplace. Yeah. So, so bro, tell us a little bit about um, your story. I think one of the themes tonight has been around God's redemption in, in some tough uh, circumstances. And, and, and you guys as a company have gone through some, some difficulties and, and kind of like, you know, Moses at the Red Sea, um, God really came through just before uh, the lockdown for you guys, eh? Yeah, so um, my testimony is just one of God's faithfulness, Sam. Um, Stangen as a life insurance company came out of a group um, that went into curatorship and business rescue about five years ago. It's been a hard journey to try and 
keep a company going who struggled even before COVID-19 prices and even before a recession hit South Africa. So it's been a long journey um, of trying to, to fight for it. And one of the scriptures that God gave me that I just meditated upon um, over these years is from Genesis 26. And it's a passage where um, God takes Isaac into different territories, different countries. Um, and it's a passage where it talks about wherever he went, he had uh, to dig a new well in order to mm. provide for his family, um, his staff, um, the community in which he's in. And every time there was a, a stumbling block, you know, um, people came, they closed up the wells and he had to move into another place and then he had to keep on digging a well. And the last five, six years for me felt like a journey of just keeping on digging wells and trusting mm. for, for breakthrough. Um, and just, um, you know, I'm so, um, um, so touched by God's timing and his faithfulness to us. Um, we uh, did a transaction with King Price and that deal uh, was forged over about a two year period. We then went into a regulatory process, uh, which took almost a year. Um, and in January, February, I cried before the Lord because I was like, I can't anymore. Like, I just can't make another well. This transaction has to go through. Um, yeah. and truth by, on 28 February, uh, before uh, lockdown um, in March, uh, we got approval from the regulator. Uh, King Price bought us. Um, we're going to launch King Price Life Insurance um, in the market. And I just know in my heart that um, if it didn't happen in February, the deal would have yeah. been a, um, it's really hard for companies to do large transactions, um, especially after COVID-19 has hit. Yeah. Uh, but to the King Price team, you know, they're a kingdom orientated business. Uh, they decided to take a risk on us, not knowing us very yeah. well. Um, yeah. And yeah, um, it's just been amazing what God has done uh, for us as a company. So that's kind of like a pre-lockdown um, story. Um, and yes. then lockdown, um, again, just God's faithfulness to us, you know, um, it was tough for us to get staff set up to work from home, especially if you run a large call center infrastructure. Again, we invested heavily in technology prior to um, COVID-19, and that has really helped us to set up a big part of operations to work mm -hmm. from home. Um, I've been amazed by just staff. Uh, we, by God's grace, are running at 80 to 90 percent sales uh, productivity um, post COVID-19. So we haven't seen a material uh, reduction in sales. Um, mm. Other amazing things, just the platforms that God has given us. You know, we're one of the um, new entrants um, in the life insurance market trying to shake up the industry. And suddenly post COVID-19, the number of opportunities we've had to be on TV, on radio, on various digital platforms, uh, talking about um, the impact of COVID-19 on life insurance. Um, all of that is just, uh, you know, God's grace upon us. Yeah. The time yeah. Like this. And yeah, yeah, I'm just, um, I don't have enough words uh, to share how grateful I am for um, God's uh, favor upon us. Um, and I think just coming back to the Lordship principle, for me, the big thing was, um, you know, as a company, as a leadership team, We've got to remain true to the call that God has for us, um, our values as individuals mm -hmm. and um, in the organization, the culture that we're trying to set. And so one mm -hmm. of the decisions we've made is we don't want to do things differently just because of COVID-19. Now, it's easy for us to go as a life insurance company, expect more claims, expect higher lapses. So let's push up the price um, and try and protect our profit margin. And we've intentionally decided to go with an approach, you know, let's continue trusting God, um, knee-jerk reactions, be fair Great. to customers, give premium waivers, um, don't increase price. In some instances, actually, let's pay um, ex gratia claims, go the extra step, uh, because, you know, that's what Christ did for us. Um, he gave officially of himself, and this is just an opportunity for us to sacrificially give of ourselves. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. in a balanced manner, but yeah, that's what we felt called to do. Right. So, bro, tell us. Um, we 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 we're running out of time. It's just been such a jam-packed evening. But um, tell us about your prayer meetings at at school. Um, the donations. There's been just uh, a lot going on, and, and it's been fantastic. 
Yeah, so um, I think one of the things God reminded me um, during this lockdown phase is that uh, passage in 1 Peter 3, 15, that says we should always be ready to give an answer for the reason for the things within, but we should do this with gentleness and respect. And I think COVID-19 is just such an opportunity for us as Christians to share yeah. about our faith, um, the, the peace that we carry in our hearts. Um, and two quick testimonies. Um, one of our senior colleagues, I've been walking a road with her probably for the last three years, um, sharing about Christ um, and what he means to me. Um, and in March, I felt God um, saying to me that I should uh, do a salary sacrifice, the equivalent of one month's salary, and just bless all the staff before lockdown um, with um, extra money to set them up um, for, for the hard lockdown. And um, she really challenged me. It's like, dude, are you stupid? Like, um, now should be the time that you bought stuff for yourself and protect yourself. I and mean, I just shared with her, you know, that last week in March, um, I've got peace. God has always provided. Um, and I sense that this is what I should do. And then in the third week of lockdown, um, she gave me a call and she said, um, Marius, um, I don't believe um, necessarily the same that you do, but um, I was challenged by the president's appeal to give to the Solidarity Fund. And you know what? I want to bless you as a church with 10,000 rand uh, really? Please to go and bless families, buy food parcels. Um, and she said to me, I would rather give the money to you guys, having seen what you've done through your life, um, the sacrifice that you made, knowing that there is a bigger purpose behind it. And even though I don't necessarily believe it at this point yet, I can see the impact that it's making. And for me, um, I just cried because for me, that's um, evangelism in the workplace, that's sowing seeds in someone's life and for someone to capture the truth um, who doesn't go to church on a regular basis um, that just blew me away um, the second testimony uh, we just um, felt you know we should also up the ante in prayer um, in discipling of our staff um, running uh, prayer groups on a more regular basis um, on a, a weekday morning we initially did three days a week we're now on two days a week and it's just been amazing to see um, okay. It's coming out from staff um, who have dialed in and yeah, have just um, opened up in a time like this to share off their lives and wanting to know more about Christ and what does the Bible say about how to do business. So yeah, just two quick testimonies. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. That's, that's so encouraging and inspiring, Marius. And, um, you know, and I know we were we were probably thinking of kind of taking some time at the end of the session to talk about this, you know, Carol Gosman's prophetic word and um, and what this new church kind of economy could look like. But I think so many of those principles have just come out in these four these four testimonies. Um, and, I, and I'm just so encouraged. And so maybe just a last word from each of you as kind of like, you know, with regards to this new economy that we on this journey to try and, um, and, and discover and seek God on, what are the things bubbling in your hearts right now, guys? And, and I'm probably going to put aside an entire evening to really just explore this. But just some snippets. What's God been saying in your lives, um, you know, um, about this new economy that we could be building inside of the church? Torrin, I think for me... Um you know, everyone has an expectation in their hearts um, about the external transformation that God's going to do in the South African economy. And I've just been reminded throughout scripture, um, external transformation is always preceded by internal transformation. Um, that our focus as a church, as Christians, should be firstly, how do we steward our own lives? Um, how do we uh, bring the Lordship of Christ into every facet of our lives? And then secondly, how do we share that with other people? Because we're only really going to see breakthrough um, in a South African context if we see hearts transformed, um, if we see stewardship uh, principles restored um, in our economy, in labor, um, in the way we treat staff, um, service providers, how we set up contracts, how we honor people. Um, and so for me, that's just the one thing um, that I sense the Holy Spirit keeps on bringing me back to is um, whatever we do, seek kingdom first. Let's focus on internal transformation and God will do the rest. Um, 
that's what my peace um, and faith is. Amen, Maurice. I think uh, that is just so critical, and you're right. God always works from the internal to the external. Sam, any closing thoughts from your side, friend? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm thinking those three levels. You know, there's the individual, there's the organizations where we serve and where we lead, and then there's the nation. And it's been a great journey just going through, you know, Lesiba and Simon talking about us as a nation, what we should be doing, um, you know, trying to make sure that the economy works for the poorest of the poor, trying to create jobs, trying to um, balance uh, income distribution and, and inequality and all of that. And then to kind of leadership in the, in the CO kind of um, C-suite level, how are we treating our staff? Um, are, we, are we living a life of honoring? How are we treating our clients, our service providers? And then as individuals, you know, how are we balancing our own budgets? Um, how are we being wise with our money? How are we giving our first fruits to the Lord? And I, and I, and I think it's kind of those, those three levels and, and each of us, um, at least in that individual level, that's, I think that's where it starts. And um, I, I can't agree more, Sam. I, I just think God is really taking us on a journey here. And, you know, it's, it's a journey of discovery. Mm. And so I, I think those of you that are watching, you're probably saying, well, why aren't we getting more answers? And the, and the truth is because I think there's two reasons. One, we're still trying to figure them out. But yeah. the second is God doesn't give answers. He gives problems and he says, figure them out. Go and, uh, go and have a look at them, you know, kind of you, you, uh, you go out there and try and figure out what I'm trying to do and apply it to your, your context. Um, next week, we have a very special guest with us. It's a man called David Leslie. David is a co-leader of an organization called Kingdom Investors. They operate out of the Gold Coast in Australia. And um, I was introduced to them um, by Paul Manwaring, a good friend of our ministry. And um, I've just been really inspired by the simplicity of the faith of these men and women that have in studied the word of God and that have gotten a unique perspective on applying biblical truths. And so David is going to be sharing his testimony with us next week. Um, and it's a testimony that kind of takes us through his journey where he was at the lowest of lows and where he's now been at the White House in the U.S., sharing his faith, sharing biblical principles, sharing kingdom investment principles. And um, we really are blessed to have him with us next week. So I want to encourage you, join us next week, 8 o'clock, Monday evening. And uh, David will be sharing his testimony with us. Probably not going to be live because uh, that'll be 4 a.m. his time. And uh, so I'm probably going to need to pre-record it. But what we will definitely do is we will make available discussion uh, either at the same time where I'll be able to answer some of the questions because I've been through a lot of that teaching already. Uh, and it certainly has trans transformed my life uh, in, in radical ways. One example I'll give you is that one of the things that came out of me looking at some of the materials that God was giving them was he challenged me to say, Dorian, I need you to set aside half a day a week where you're going to do nothing except seek me. So I know you're building a business. I know you've got priorities. I know you've got responsibilities. I know the COVID-19, you know, we even have chores that we have to do. But he challenged me. And so from the beginning of this year, I've been setting aside Tuesday mornings from nine till one o'clock, where all I do is I just seek God. And I say, Lord, show me what you want me to do. Pray things through, strategically reveal things to me. And it's changed the way that I've just embraced and approached so much of what I do in business. And so I want to encourage you, join us next week. David will be with us. And um, I trust that he's going to be a blessing to all of us as well. Sam, Morris, uh, Neo, Andrew, um, Rebecca, thank you guys for being part of, with, of this with us this evening. And uh, we trust that all of you have been blessed as we have been. God bless Thanks, you. Everybody. Good night.